In a cycloaddition reaction, two distinct pi systems get together and form bonds on their ends or at their termini to create a new ring. So two new sigma bonds are created in one go and two pi bonds in the two distinct pi systems are broken. These are named based on the, the sizes of the pi systems involved and use per parentheses or in older or less careful literature, you'll see square brackets used um, to indicate the sizes of, of the pi systems. This is how we name them. So for example, a two plus two involves two alkenes coming together to form a four membered ring. And so here, for example, we have one of those highlighted in red, one highlighted in blue. We get those two coming together and the new sigma bonds are here and here. Electrons move, for example, from there to there and from this pi system back to the other carbon. In the second case, we have a four plus two cycloaddition where this four atom pi system gets together with this two atom pi system and we end up with a six membered ring. Again, two new sigma bonds and notice that two pi bonds have been broken. The pi bond in the blue two atom component and one of the pi bonds in the four atom component. Finally, we have an example of a six plus four cycloaddition where a hexatriene gets together with butadiene and we end up with a 10 membered ring now where again, the two new bonds are between the termini or the ends of the pi system and we've lost two pi bonds, one from the six atom component and one from the four atom component. This four plus two cycloaddition is one of the most important reactions in all of organic chemistry. And we're gonna look at that in great detail in the ensuing videos. An electrocyclic reaction involves the cyclization of a pi system or what we might call ring closing or the reverse, which is ring opening to form a conjugated pi system. One pi bond is broken and one sigma bond is made on the whole, although we're shifting pi electrons around or pi electrons plus one sigma bond to make these reactions happen. And these are named based on the number of pi electrons involved. So here at the top, for example, we have a six pi reaction where six pi electrons are moving around in a circle. And the new sigma bond is really formed by this arrow uh, highlighted in orange. So this is a six pi electrocyclic ring closing reaction. At the bottom here, we have a four pi situation because there are four electrons shifting around. And the one that breaks the sigma bond to open the ring is really this arrow highlighted in orange right here. This is a four pi electrocyclic ring opening. Now, both of these are reversible processes. For example, this six membered ring could reopen back to the hexatriene system. This butadiene could hypothetically close to this four membered cyclobutene ring. And in thinking about which side is favored, we want to consider things like ring strain, bonds made and broken, and that sort of thing. So for example, in this first case, this cyclization is often favorable because we're ending up with a six membered ring and we're trading a new sigma bond for a pi bond. And sigma bonds generally being stronger than pi bonds, this tends to be a favorable process. In the bottom case, we are opening a four membered ring. And so we're relieving quite a bit of ring strain in the cyclobutene. So this tends to favor the 1,3-butadiene structure, which is not that surprising given we've said a lot already about 1,3-butadiene. One last thing to consider here is stereochemistry. Electrocyclic reactions can form stereocenters, both tetrahedral stereocenters, when we're closing a ring and creating that new sigma bond, and trigonal stereocenters with EZ configurations, for example, when we open a ring. So we'll talk a little bit more about how to predict the stereochemistry of electrocyclic reactions in the near future. In a sigmatropic rearrangement, a sigma bond moves across a pi system. And these are named based on the lengths of the pi system over which the sigma bond moves. And when a one is used, there's no migration at all. There's just an atom that's moving with the sigma bonding electron sort of along for the ride as that bond migrates along a pi system of some length. These reactions are often reversible because there's no net cleavage or formation of sigma or pi bonds. So any bias in one direction or another is gonna come down to, for example, creating a more substituted double bond or a polarized double bond that's stronger than an unpolarized double bond that we start with in the starting materials or something along those lines. The nomenclature here can get a little bit confusing. And so I wanted to work through two examples of sigmatropic rearrangements to explain 
how the nomenclature comes about. First here we have a 1-5 rearrangement at the top of the slide. And this is called, uh, well, first let's look at the electron flow. So what's happening here is these pi electrons are heading into a new sigma bond with the hydrogen. You see that here. And then the CH electrons are moving into a new pi bond. And the pi electrons are shifting over to get us back where we started, in a sense. If we think about what this looks like in terms of the migrating sigma bond, it looks like this sigma bond has moved from this position all the way to the other side of this pi system, which is one, two, three, four, five atoms. On the other hand, the hydrogen side hasn't moved at all, right? Hydrogen has sort of just sat still, just come along for the ride with those migrating electrons. And so there's our five atom pi system, quote unquote, from carbon one all the way around to carbon five. And that's where the five in this name comes from. The one comes from the fact that the other side of the bond doesn't really migrate anywhere, it just sits attached to hydrogen the entire time. So this is a one five rearrangement. The bottom case is an example of a sigma bond migrating at both points or on both sides of the bond. What appears to happen here is this sigma bond moves over to this side bo at both attachment points, right? And so this is what's called a 3-3 three, three sigmatropic rearrangement. The electron flow looks like this. It's again cyclic. So these pi electrons are used to create a new sigma bond. Pi electrons shift over and the sigma bonding electrons break to form a new pi bond here. And it's called a 3-3 three, three because both ends of the sigma bond migrate over three atoms. So at the top, for example, we have one, two, three. And at the bottom, we have one, two, three. And notice that the new sigma bond appears at carbons three and three on the other side. So let's go ahead and label those. That side, we have carbon one, two, three, and we have carbon one, two, three. And this is called a three, three sigmatropic rearrangement because of the linkage between the two carbons labeled three in the product.